Greetings, this is Pastor Eugene Cowan II of the Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And I want to welcome you to our virtual worship experience where we're transforming lives through the Word of God. Open up your heart, open up your mind, and open up your life to receive a relevant and real word that will transform your life from the inside out. Come on and join us in our worship experience.
that it will the sinner from the depths of hell to backslide her back in a right relationship. Strengthen the saints, edify this your church. Lift up my Savior Jesus Christ. And most of all, God, glorify your kingdom in heaven. This is your service prayer in Jesus' name. Lord, touch somebody that they may say, What must I do to be saved? In Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter number 2, verse 11. The word of the Lord declares, So I came to Jerusalem and there was there three days. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and to the refuse gate. And I viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and its gates which were burned with fire. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool but there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up in the night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate. And so I returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the others who did the work. Then I said to them, You see the distress that we are not, that we are in. How Jerusalem lies in waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be real reproached. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me. And also the king's word that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. And when Sambalot the Hornite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, what is this thing you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered them and I said to them, The God of heaven himself will prosper us, and therefore we his servants will arise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Blessed be the hand, reading of God's holy word. For a little while, I want to talk about rise up, rise up, rise up. Nehemiah has gotten permission from the king. Nehemiah understands the situation and the circumstances that he's dealing with. What's wrong? The camera just adjusted. What you mean it just adjusted? It means it's a lot. Jerusalem and was there three days then I arose in the night. I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. 
nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent wall and the refuse gate. I viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and its gates which were burned with fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate and the king's pool. But there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up in the night by the valley. I viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered the valley gate. And so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies in waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and I also of the king's word that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. But when Samalah, the Horite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab, heard of it, they laughed at us and they despised us and said, what is this thing that you are doing? You will rebel against the king. So I asked with them and I said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we will, we his servants, will arise and build. For you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want you to go to verse number 12. It said these words. Then I rose in the night. I and a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Nor was there any animal with me except the one I rode. For a long a while, I'm going to talk about what God has put on your heart. Nehemiah, and I share in this series of sermons already. His heart was broken when he heard about the walls of Jerusalem being torn down. He's gotten permission from King Exorcy to be away from the kingdom and to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. He's gone on his journey. He's left the palace and now he's headed to Jerusalem. And beloved brothers and sisters, let me share with you it's not just a few days journey to get there. But he takes this journey to get to Jerusalem. And can I share with you, no doubt about it, he had obstacles. No doubt about it, he wanted to turn around. There's no doubt about it that he felt that will people help me when I get there to do this journey. But can I share with you, because he had time to pray with God. And because he had time to fast with God. And God has already shown him favor. He now takes the step to move to rebuild the wall. He goes to Jerusalem. He crosses over the Euphrates. He, he goes to the governor of the province and writes the letter of the authority of the king. He takes his travel. He, he moves through the territory until he can get to the place where God has told him to rebuild the walls. Brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. That you have to be willing to take the journey if you're going to get the job done. You're going to have to be willing to take the journey if you're going to get the job done. He had to go through this territory that had been uh, without the king's authority. He had to go through this territory where people were revolting, but even though he went through this territory, it was his intention to 
set this to Jerusalem. And the Lord, brothers and sisters, let me share with you as they went on this journey, as he went down to Jerusalem, he made sure that he got all of the equipment that he needed to take care of the job. But let it, brothers and sisters, when God put something on your heart to do, you got to dot every eye and you got to cross every T. You got to make sure that your strategy is in place. You got to make sure that your plan is in order. And here, Nehemiah, he gets to Jerusalem and picks it up in the text that he gets to Jerusalem. And when he gets there, he rests for three days. Can I share something with you? That three days is very important. If you were listening to Sunday school in three days, God always used the number three representing the five, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That number three is the Trinity of God. He is Nehemiah when he gets to Jerusalem, being tired from his journey, tired from getting everything together, tired from making sure that all the logistics are in place. He rests for three days, but can it be paused for station identification? Everyone knew that he was in town. He was resting and they knew they stopped by, they checked on him. You know how it is when you go back home, go down south, you go see, uh, you get there, you want to rest, but then all your cousins start coming over. Everybody start checking on you. Everybody start making sure you're okay. You're resting, you're trying to recuperate from the drive, from the journey. Nehemiah is recovering from the journey. But I want you to see verse number 12, because now we're going to get into the meat of the text. It says that he rose at night. I and a few good men with me. I told no one what God had put on my heart to do in Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. Let me share something with you. You cannot share your vision with everybody. You cannot share your dreams with everybody. You cannot share your plans with everybody. Everybody don't understand. Everybody can't comprehend. Everybody has not fasted. Everybody has not been praying. Everybody has not taken the time out to lay out the Lord God. And let me share something else. If God don't put his hand on them like he got his hand on you, they don't understand in the first place. That's what I know about the text. Yeah, he's 
rock, it'll take you to the bottom, it'll take you to the wilderness, it'll take you to the river, it'll take you to the street. Where God put it on your heart, you gotta be willing to go wherever God wants you to go. It says He used the wall, and then He turned back. He turned back. He completed his assignment. Yeah. And then he turned back. Yeah. But let me go as a sister. Let me say something with you. You got to make sure that you make a proper inspection before you try to be here. So that you will know that your building are a strong foundation. He is looking for the crack. He is looking for the break. He is looking for the burn down day.
steal the walls of Jerusalem. Oh, wait a minute. He said, let us build the wall. The, let us build the walls of Jerusalem. Let us do it. See, sometimes people from the outside want to tell the people on the inside how to do and what to do. Listen, you can't tell me how to do and what to do if you want to help me do it. I, I wish I had some help up in here. I need you all the time. I want to come on. I don't need you to be the cause. I need you to be a player. Look at the text and say, come, let us be on the wall of the room that we may no longer be a reproach. That we may no longer be a reproach. Lord, build the, the wall of justice again. That now we will no longer be a reproach. Yes, they can lie in the free. I will hold another place for Lord. Let us not be a reproach anymore. Let us, let us, let us, let us, let us build the walls of Jerusalem. That we will no longer be a reproach. I know, I know. I know, I know you're doing good and you ain't in the hood no more. I know, I know you're doing well and living swell. I, I know you're eating from late meat young. I know you're going down to the crab place and eating up crab. I know, I, I, I understand. I understand you're doing good in your life right now. But can I suggest to you, beloved brothers and sisters, you can change your zip code, but you can't change your skin color. Talk to me, somebody. You can change where you live, but you can't change who you are. You can change your address, but you can't change how they want to address you. You better come on and help me up in here. The truth of the night is, is that you got to recognize is that we are in this together. Dr. King said, injustice anywhere. It, it trans injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This is what he's saying. He's saying in the text, I'm here with you. I'm not here to command you. I'm here to help you. I'm here with you. I, let me tell you, let me tell you something. I need us to build the walls of Jerusalem. That we may no longer be a reproach. I told them of the hand of my God, which has been good upon me. And also of the king's word, which he has spoken to me. And that's why the beloved watch this. I want to show you something in the text. Because God, he, he gives us some good revelation in this. He helps us to see something, how he's moving mightily on behalf of Nehemiah. And what he, he lets him know, he says, let me share something with you. And let me give you the report. The walls are torn down, but God, listen, God not only has he been with me, but also the king has given me authority to do it. Can I share something with you? When you got divine authority and you got God's authority operating with kingly authority, that means you got two aces, baby. And when you play your two aces, you got to win. Well, the Amara was letting them know not only did God see me, but I got authority in the land. In other words, the king has given me authorization and God has given me authorization. And if God has given me authorization, tell people the law. Who gonna stop us? Who gonna stand against us? Oh, come on, help me, somebody. Who can fight against you when you got God on your side? He's gonna win me. Let the world when it comes against me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Nehemiah, he shares his report, beloved. He shares his report. He tells them the walls are torn down. He gives us his report, but not only does he give his report, he also gives us his recommendation. He says, let us build the wall. He says, let us do it. And beloved brothers and sisters, I love the text because when you read the text and you see that Nehemiah, when he speaks to the people and he tells them about the situation that they're facing, they don't get scared. They, they don't calm it down. They don't give up. Look at the text. It says in verse number 18, he says, And I told them of the hand of God which is upon me, and also of the king's word which he has spoken to me. And they said to us, listen to what they said. Their response was this, Let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Nehemiah 
tells them about authorization from God. I got authorization from the king. God hand is on me. The king is giving me grace to do it. This is what I think we ought to do. And listen to what the people said. They said, let us rise up and be it. Beloved brothers and sisters, whenever God gives you a prayer, whenever God puts something on your heart, God will connect the right people to connect with what God has put on your heart. God will connect you with the people that are willing to do the work of God will connect you with the right resources to make the thing come to pass. God will be in the God strategy and the God plan and God will make it what you look at what the people say. They say, so let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do the work. You know what? My granddad used to tell me, talk is cheap. Not only did they say they wanted to work, they put their hands to the plow and they were being ready to work. But let it brothers and sisters, you got a lot of people who say they want to work, but they don't want to use their hands to do the work. They always want to talk about it, but they never want to be about it. But let it brothers and sisters, Nehemiah, his heart I know is overjoyed. His heart, because the people got a mind. They got a heart. They want to do it. And it's mad about it. They are ready to be able to walk. Watch this. Can I show you something? Can I show you something? Whenever, whenever, whenever things go smooth, whenever things are going smooth, there will always be a hiccup. Talk to me somebody. Whenever, 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 whenever things are going right, Whenever things begin to happen, there's always going to be somebody that's going to say something against what God has put on your heart. Look at verse 19. Y'all don't see it. It's right there in your Bible. Look at there. It says, But when Sambala, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, and Geshem, the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and they despised us. And they said, what is this thing that you are doing? You will rebel against the king. On the surface, beloved, you would let that pass. But you got to really take some in-depth thought to this. In the Hebrew, when it says they laughed at us. In other words, they were mocking them. They were, they were, they were antagonizing them. It says that they despised us. Which means they had a disdain and a hatred. Uh, in other words, it wasn't the fact that they were the rulers. Some of like the Herod, Tobiah, the Ammonite official, yes, of the Arab, the head, heard of it. They laughed at us. They despised them. Can I share with you what God put on your heart? There will be opposition to your position, but you do not stop doing what God has put on your heart to do. But other brothers and sisters, look at what he's saying. They're saying, you know what? What you're trying to do is rebel against the king. What you're trying to do is start a uprising. What you're trying to do is rebel against the authority of the king. You try to rebuild the wall. That means you're coming against King Exodus. But I know what Nehemiah does. Let me tell you, beloved, whenever you have people that try to pull you off of what God has put on your heart to do, you got to know how to answer them. you got to answer them in a spiritual way. And you got to answer them in a beautiful way. you got to answer them and let them know. Guess what? I know where you're coming from. And Nehemiah, he overcomes their ridicule. And he rebukes them. And he says, let me tell you something, brothers. The God of heaven himself will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will rise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. In other words, what me and I were saying, this is not your land, this is not your territory, this is not yours. This is what God has given to us. And God has laid it on my heart to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And I got authority from God. And I got authority from the king. So as the king thought I was going to rise up against him, the king knew I had given me the authority to rebuild the walls. Beloved brothers and sisters, let me close this by telling you when God put something 
nothing on your heart. You gotta know how to stand for what God has already given you. You gotta know how to stand on your own two feet and say, you know what? This is what the Lord has laid on my heart. And the Lord God has laid it on my heart. I will give God my everything. And when the opposition comes, you gotta stand and say, you know what? That might be what you think. But let me tell you that God is better. He promised that He will bless you with us. He marvels you. The brothers and sisters, even in the midst of a pandemic, can I tell you one thing? The God that I serve, He promised in this world that He would prosper us through all of this, through all of the racism, through all of the trials, through all. Oh, <laughs> 
on your heart. You got to do it. With God, you can see on your heart. You got to do it. Beloved brothers and sisters, come here. God is saying, God is saying, I'm putting it on your heart. That relationship that needs to be rebuilt. God is putting it on your heart. You know that argument you had with your, with your spouse, God is putting it on your heart. You know that relationship with your child, God is putting it on your heart. Ask God to teach you how to do it. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. That situation on the job, God is teaching you how to do it. Lord, put it on my heart, Lord. How to fix what is broken. How to mend that which has been torn. God, put it on my heart. I'm not going to wait for them to do it, but God, you put it on my heart to do it. Touch right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Touch that family right now. Struggling with the family member that's dealing with illness and sickness. Lord, you don't know what day is going to be our last day. We don't know what we're going to take our hands to God. But God, I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be holy. Yes, God. Yes, God. I want to have my business in order. In the name of Jesus. For God puts it on the heart. He said, God will put the right people. In your pathway. When God puts it on your heart, God will send you to go. When God puts it on your heart, you can expect opposition. When God puts it on your heart, hey Lord, you got to know how to hang on in there. To run on the sea again. If it's our financial breakthrough, we shall come to the back. If it's the 
for joining us in worship. You can connect with me, Pastor Eugene Cowan II, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And connect with our church family on www.jeremiahmbc.com. I would love to see you in person. Join us for worship, 4519 West Fillard, Jeremiah Missionary Baptist Church. And remember, it's better to have Jesus and not needing than to needing and not having.